Welcome back to Dan Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie, Women, released in the year 2021. The movie opens on a junkyard as the police uncover the mutilated body of a woman found in the trunk of a car. When Detective Darren Hawk arrives at the scene, he is told that a woman named Norma had found the body before notifying the police. The preliminary investigation had found the woman had been dead for more than a month and no form of identification had been found on her. Hawk then follows up with Norma, but on meeting her, learns she is a homeless drug addict, so he offers to arrange a room at a hotel for her, which she graciously accepts. Meanwhile, the examiner finds the dead woman had been abused and tortured before being murdered, but were unable to lift any fingerprints from the body. With no other viable clues, Hawk orders a search of the missing person's database to find if anyone has reported someone missing who matches her description. While explaining the case to his assistant Nancy, Hawk suggests matching her DNA with a list of missing girls, but since a lot of girls have recently gone missing, they realize it'll probably take a long time. Hawk is later approached by a woman named Rose, who talks to him about her missing sister, Jennifer. She shows him a postcard Jennifer sent her, asking the family to stop looking for her. Rose asks Hawk if the body they found is her sister, but since the police have yet to confirm her identity, Hawk can't tell her anything. When he returns to the police station, Hawk gets a call confirming there was a DNA match between the body and a missing girl named Linda Bridges. When Hawk goes to inform Linda's mother about her death, he asks for permission to search Linda's room. While looking through her belongings, he finds a postcard that looks identical to the one Rose had shown him earlier. Hawk now suspects both girls may have been kidnapped by the same person, indicating a potential serial killer. As Linda had been abused and tortured before her death, Hawk suggests talking to the locals to see if anyone has seen a suspicious person in the area. Meanwhile, we meet a sociology teacher named Bradley Gilmore as he tells Jennifer, Rose's missing sister, that he is planning to bring a new girl into the house. Jennifer tries to persuade him not to by reminding him what happened the last time, but he shuts her up, saying he will handle it better this time. The next day, Bradley visits a local store where Haley, one of his students, works as a salesperson and asks her to show him some clothing options for his wife. While Haley helps him find some options, she mentions that she missed her ride and he offers to drop her off at home. Haley reluctantly agrees to let him take her home and gets in the car with him, but instead, he knocks her unconscious and kidnaps her. Meanwhile, Detective Hawk attends a group therapy session where he shares his traumatic past. He tells the group that both his mother and his sister were drug addicts, so he vowed never to drink or smoke so he wouldn't turn out like them. One day, he found his sister had died in a hotel room, but hid it from his mother. To this day, she still searches for her daughter, while he assures her he is doing everything he can to find her as well. Back at Bradley's house, while having dinner with Jennifer, he hears some noises coming from where he is keeping Haley upstairs and goes to check on her. When Jennifer hears her screams, she gets upset, knowing that he must be abusing her. Then, Bradley just calmly returns to the table as if nothing had happened. Meanwhile, Hawk keeps searching for the missing girls in the area, but is still not able to find any viable clues to lead him to the serial killer. As Bradley's attention diverts to Haley, Jennifer becomes upset, especially after he scolds her for wearing the new dress that he had bought for the new girl. Jennifer reluctantly returns the dress to Haley and brings her downstairs to join them for lunch. Returning to her room after lunch, Haley finds Jennifer there, who warns her not to try escaping as Bradley is watching them at all times. When Haley learns Jennifer is another one of Bradley's victims, she asks her about her abduction, and it is revealed she has been here with him for five years. Jennifer then begins to groom her, saying Bradley wants them to look a certain way, and shows her the room she'll be sharing with her. 
She also tells her they are required to follow a certain dress code and must always obey Bradley's orders. The next morning, when Haley begins screaming for help, Jennifer comes and slaps her in the face, calling her ungrateful. Jennifer has accepted her fate and asks Haley to do the same. Otherwise, she will end up like all the other girls who came before her. That's when Jennifer tells her the only way she has survived for all these years is because she always obeys Bradley and never betrays him. A few months go by and Hawk receives a call from Haley's father who informs him they got a postcard from her asking them to stop looking for her exactly like all the other girls. When Hawk asks him what Haley is like, he says she is a kind and smart girl who never did any drugs. In fact, she never even had a boyfriend. However, when he later questions Haley's friend, he hears a very different side of her, saying Haley was a rebellious girl who had tried drugs and dated lots of boys, but never let her family know about any of it. As the investigation progresses, Hawk visits Haley's university, where he learns that Haley, Linda, and Jennifer were not only all students there, but they also took the same class. Discussing it with Nancy, he decides to meet Bradley, the professor of the class that all three missing girls attended. In his meeting with Bradley, Hawk notices his wedding ring and asks if he had noticed anything unusual before Haley's disappearance. Bradley tries to play it cool and act ignorant, but Hawk is suspicious of him and asks if he thinks it's a coincidence that all three missing girls were from his class. When Bradley gets home that night, he questions Jennifer about Haley's attitude, but she assures him that Haley has accepted her fate. One night, while alone in their room, Haley notices an air duct and considers escaping the house through it. Jennifer warns her about the consequences of attempting to get free, but Haley thinks they should not give up without trying. Still suspicious of the strange professor, Hawk begins to investigate Bradley. In his search, he learns that a girl named Hillary Jones had filed a rape case against him, but it was dismissed due to a lack of evidence. To learn more, Hawk meets her brother Aaron, who tells him Hillary was dating Bradley when he raped her multiple times. Then one day, she left him and went abroad. At first she sent him postcards, but eventually they stopped and he hasn't heard from his sister since. After this visit to Aaron, Hawk continues digging into Bradley's past and when he finds no record of a marriage, he becomes convinced he lied about that too. Hawk wants to question him further, but Nancy objects, since Bradley is seen as a respectable man in the town, pushing too hard might offend the locals. But Hawk tracks Bradley down and finds him working on his boat, which he claims to be named after his wife. Hawk mentions Hillary and what he learned from Aaron, but Bradley denies having a relationship with her, saying they only flirted, but does admit he knew about her passion for traveling. Hawk is still suspicious of him, but as he still has no hard evidence against him, he leaves without saying another word. A few days later, Bradley asks Haley to play the piano for him, but every time she makes a mistake, he slaps her. Jennifer sees this and tries to help Haley to protect her from the abuse. Back in their room, Jennifer finds Haley crying on the bed and tries to comfort her, but Haley lashes out, destroying the security camera and saying that she needs to escape. Jennifer tries to stop her, warning her that she will be severely punished, but Haley argues with her and doesn't understand why she doesn't try to leave him. She starts to try and escape through the vent, but changes her mind and comes back to join Jennifer and Bradley downstairs. Bradley often reads to the girls and tries to start discussions with them, and until now, Haley had never participated. But eventually, as Haley becomes more numb to her situation, she begins to talk with Bradley, but this connection makes Jennifer jealous. In their next session, Bradley questions the girls about the broken camera. Haley lies and says Jennifer did it while trying to escape. Jennifer tries to tell Bradley the truth, but he loses his temper and drags her away to his torture room. 
That night, he rapes Haley before sending her back to their room, where a badly injured Jennifer joins her later. Meanwhile, Hawk's mother urges him to find his missing sister. She tries to go out and look for her daughter herself, but Hawk goes to pick her up and brings her home. Meanwhile, Jennifer is angry about what Haley did to her. She decides to take her revenge and talks to her about making a plan to escape together. Detective Hawk makes a surprise visit to Bradley's house where he questions him about his family. When Bradley lies again, saying he lives with his wife, Hawk asks if he can come inside and take a look around. In the house, Hawk admires Bradley's art collection, which he claims to have collected while traveling with his wife. As the two talk downstairs, Jennifer tells Haley this is their best chance of escaping and tells her to climb inside the duct. But once inside, Jennifer closes the duct and locks it behind her, trapping Haley. With no other choice, Haley starts climbing through the duct in an attempt to free herself from this prison. Back downstairs, Hawk tells Bradley he knows about his traumatic childhood, how his father used to torture his mother, but still does not accuse him of anything. But before leaving, Hawk presses further, asking why there is no record of his marriage certificate. Bradley tries to say it must be some kind of mistake with the database, but still unsatisfied, Hawk insists on meeting his supposed wife. But Bradley tells the detective he will have to come over another time and forces him to leave. After Hawk is gone, Bradley sees Haley leaving the duct system on the security cameras. He begins frantically searching for her as she tries to make her way outside. Then Bradley sees Haley running away and shoots her dead. He then returns to see Jennifer has gotten ready in the same dress Bradley had bought for Haley. Later that night, Hawk returns to search through Bradley's house but finds no one inside. On leaving the house, he spots Jennifer standing in the driveway, but Bradley hits him in the head and he drops his gun. Detective Hawk and Bradley fight each other while Jennifer picks up Hawk's gun and shoots him. Bradley then gets up and asks Jennifer to give him the gun, but instead, she shoots him and walks away. That was all from the video. Subscribe for more content like this and leave a like to help the channel out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Take care.